So here I am, lowly foot soldier. I've been told to hold this spot with my stick. And here is <laughs> a not lowly war horse. This is Warlord. He's one of the horses I've done most of my medieval stuff Hello, on. Warlord. He's a Lusitano. He's a Lusitano gelding. All right. um, he's getting on a bit now, but he knows he's his job. Quite a lot. And uh, there, this is the this is molting. This is his winter coat coming out. So he's looking a bit moth-eaten, um, but he knows his job. So there's a fair chance mm -hmm. he won't run into you. A fair, Good. A fair, fair to middling chance you'll be safe. I like to live dangerously. <laughs> Shall I get on him and? Uh, Okay, Should so we do something? First, oh. it's rider versus footman. Well, I thought it'd be interesting for you to experience what it's like to be the poor bloody infantryman yeah. when there's cavalry around and, and what it does to your viewpoint and whether you can run away from me, maybe. Oh, okay. So what are you going to come at me with? Sword? I will, I'll get a spear first. Let me just warm him okay, up. So where do you want me? Back here? Uh, if you just stay there, yeah. Oh, where yeah. I am, in fact. Okay. Well, wherever you like, but but when I, I'm not going to, I'm just going to walk around you for now, just to get All him right. familiarised. But you can see yep. the well, just a horse walking is faster than a human being walking. So I could sort of walk mm -hmm. reasonably well, just keeping distance. Yeah. But. Um, I, I can also, once he's tuned in a little bit, I can also go a bit sideways. He's not quite warmed up yet. Um, let me just, just uh, let me grab a spear. Good boy. This is the same length as yours, by the way, I think. Right. So I don't have a reach advantage necessarily. Um, Do you think geldings would have been used much in war? I think definitely, not in, well, I think if you, were, if you were spending top money, you'd have a stallion if you were in the West. Although mares were used a lot in the east. Um, right. And I believe some of the first crusades, there are conversations between the sides saying, hang on, you've got mares in heat and we've got stallions. This is, this is not going to be a proper battle. This is going to be horse sexual chaos. Um, the stallions respond very poorly when there are mares in heat, but it would be a technique to use, wouldn't it? Yes, it's, it's one way to distract the enemy's cavalry. Now, obviously, if I was... Um, if I was attacking you, I've got two choices. I can be this side mm -hmm. or I can be this side. Right. Uh, this is the side you typically joust on. Right. When you're running a tilt, you always have the tilt rail on this side of you. Right. So if you've so got you, a shield, that's your protected side. Yeah, exactly. So you'd be jousting like this, elbow up or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but also the angle is different. So I'd probably be hitting another knight at almost 45 degrees. And that creates a bending movement, which snaps the lance. Right. But war. If I was doing war, yep. I would be... So my shield's on this I side, think, you yeah. go for my open side. So I'd be going for this side, which is the side you have your weapon on. Yep. But also, it's more direct, it's much more straight. And as you know, if you're trying to push a... You know, breaking a pencil by pushing the middle of it breaks it easily, but you can push a pencil through a piece of cardboard quite easily. Hmm. And I think that is probably more likely to be the side. We see, on the Battle of San Romano, we actually do see both sides used. So I think it's probably wherever you are, I will try and stab you, regardless of whether it's technically perfect or not, as always. Well, yes, and you've got lots of knights charging at each other. Yeah. You could pretend to be going for that guy. He, he then defends himself. This guy's not defending himself because he thinks he's going, you're going for him. And then you and swap then you... side and ha-ha, gotcha. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. But shall I, um, shall I just go past you in a straight line at a little bit more speed so that you can... Well, I don't. And I get um, the, the feeling which you can never get on camera is cameras do not record how flipping heavy horses are. And when a really big weight that's this far off the ground misses you by a small distance, there's, there's a feeling, a, a visceral feeling that you, <laughs> you, you encounter in reality that you just don't get off a screen. So if you just stay there, that's good. I'll just good. stand like this. And if I just do, you know, just, just go. Horses are really big. <laughs> I flinched. I flinched, definitely. And, you know, I'm literally not trying to hit you. There's always Thank a possibility. You. Horse doesn't know it's acting. Mm -hmm. He won't deliberately try and hit you unless I angle him at you uh, or he makes a mistake of panics. And of course, horses can panic. This is the other thing as well. Horses right. can, 
have a reaction that you can't control and you suddenly find yourself on a horse that's bolting. I had saddlery break on him once and it was pushing the saddle into his back. And the only thing I could do, because he was flat out galloping, yeah. um, and the only thing I could do was leave. I had to get off the saddle at speed. And when we talk about falling off, that was really unpleasant because I was trying to choose a comfortable-ish yeah. bit of grass. And I knew the impact was going to really hurt me. And I broke a rib as a result of it. But the, and the, I, t- I took the pressure off his back and he immediately calmed down. But it was the only way because I couldn't stop him to get off. I had to fling myself off. Right. So I imagine in war, horses will panic as well. Even if they're really well trained, you get hit and injured, it suddenly mm-hmm. takes over and you've got 400, 500 kilos of creature just deciding to go where it wants to with its very small brain and going to dif- you know, completely disrupt your, your formation. Yeah, and it only takes one. Do you want to have a look at what would happen with a spear on different sides? Mm-hmm. If somebody's got a lance and they're, they're coming towards you, if you deflect that... Towards you? Either way, any oh, way you want, right, yeah. basically. If you do it towards, you might knock him into my horse. Okay, so But if, you, way, if you knock it that way, right. and then look where you are, yep. you can stab me. Right. And I've got no... So that's the, that's the basic technique. So if, I walk to, if I walk towards you, um, and then I'll show you what I would do to avoid that happening. And it, and it fits in quite nicely with what we talked about earlier. So if okay. I'm like this. Right, so I knock out. Knock it out of the way. And then, stab. Yeah. So yep. you've, you've defeated the point, which is what you, once you get past the point of a lance, it's just a long stick that's actually got a leverage, can be used against me. If I go on the other side of you now, we, saw the, we see this in Furious flower, flower of Battle. So if I go this side of you... Do you want me to do the same? Wanted, basically, yeah, we can do... Okay, like, so yeah. I take it out yeah. and thrust. But okay. then you've got... <laughs> but that can actually get under my arm as well. Yep. So there's, all you're trying to do is, as foot, if you can keep calm, you just deflect the point. Now, obviously, this is one footman and one, <laughs> one cavalryman. At very low speed. At very low speed as well, yeah. yes. But so, so what I think you should, part of lance control is I keep my lance high yep. out of your way and it's only when I'm at the right time then I lower it into you. So I've got to wait so until you, the last instant. Yeah, so you've got, you can't see it coming nice and neatly and, and, mm. and prepare. It's going to be up here and then I lower it into the target at the last minute. So you've got a moment to do it. Yeah. You've got to keep your sense of, uh, of uh, humanity together, which is very difficult when you've got a horse. Because, of course, there'd be a line of you, wouldn't there, as well? And mm. I don't know how close they were. I mean, the phalanx was more or less, was it shoulder to shoulder? Well, uh, if, if I'm a halberdier, yes, we'd be in quite dense formation. Uh, but then all going well, don't forget, a halberd has got a dirty great spike on the end of it. Um, we, we, you, you don't close with us. So I just get to here and the horse refuses. And, and, yeah, and, 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 and not or the horse dies more that. close or gets yes, in I mean, I, I, I could jab yeah. at your horse. Uh, yeah. Of course, if I parried towards your horse, as you were, you were saying, and I'm, I'm a billman and I've yeah. got a bill hook and you carry on, I can now hook you as you go past me yeah. and, and pull and you pull back. Me. That's a very good point. Yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Hence the, the hook could be used for all sorts of things or on yeah. the horse's leg, potentially. Um, which is, yes, and I was talking uh, about how I've got more angles of attack. I can go up at you, but I can go straight across at the horse, and I can also trip. And if I've got something like a, a halberd, which has usually got a hooky bit on it somewhere, yeah. um, uh, a, a fast-moving, heavy armoured horse tripped. Yeah. I, I actually think foot, properly organised, have got an advantage over cavalry. But they're going to be held down, aren't they? They're going to be held in place. Well, when, when are we talking about it? We're talking about the, the days of the Wars of the Roses, mm. and you're an English knight. Uh, you probably got off your horse two miles away and uh, gave and it to an, uh, an attendant to hold whilst you fought me on foot. Yeah, because that was the English style, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of other, other eras, uh, eras, of, um, eras of, of horse combat, because the Shiltrons, the Scottish Shiltrons, mm-hmm. got... Well, they beat the cavalry to begin with, didn't they? Then they evolved new techniques to use the cavalry to intimidate the Shiltrons and then shoot them to death yeah. with longbows from a distance because the Shiltrons couldn't really move effectively. No, it was actually Napoleonic tactics. You use your cavalry to, to force them into square and then you use your artillery to blast the square. It's the same thing, but with Shiltrons and longbows. Right. 
And so it's sort of combined arms, as always. We see in the movies that cavalry are the best or whatever, and they're not, not if they're not used properly in the right way with other people. As, as long as you are stationary, um, you're just a bigger target. Yeah, because here, if, I'm, if, if I am stationary, uh, you know, I, I guess with two hands I could do a certain amount, but you, you can get, if I, if I just go, if you go behind me. Right, so if I try to stay behind you, yeah. I, the, the, the horse won't kick back. But. No, he, he won't, he won't. I'll just, I'll just stay okay, static. Okay, so I'm going to try to stay three quarters behind you, like here. Yeah. So, so, so you I'll, try to turn, yeah. and I'll try to stay behind you. <laughs> I'll try to turn this. Yeah. You could just keep doing that forever. It's quite funny. It's quite intimidating. Is that actually, actually as fast as you can turn? Uh, let me try. It. Let me try it faster then. Yeah, I thought you could turn okay. faster than that. Okay, yeah, you got round. <laughs> just, but uh, you would, you know, if you weren't aware, you could quickly nip around behind somebody, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and stab them. As oh I said, yeah, you know. and because uh, cavalry take up more space, the density of footmen on the ground is greater. So one is running round and the other guy stays still and at one point one of them is behind you i wonder if they kind of had combined the the foot went like you distract him you wave your spear and threaten him and i'll go round and stab him in the back i think it would happen absolutely and and once the horseman is playing that game he's he's near enough lost yeah. already i think and but what i would do you just got to get out of the way you just use your horse's speed yeah. and you clear the area and it's not even from a from a cavalry perspective from a from a human's perspective on the back of the horse, it's not much effort to actually gallop 50 yards away and reset. Um, Ooh, what oh. does that mean? He's doing a bit of Spanish walk, he's being fancy. Good boy. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is just a bit, little bit of, bit of high school. I can do that. <laughs> Good boy. So one of the awkward things is always, again, I think the straps are slightly in the wrong place, but mm. I don't think you can see, I can, I'm still, I can still control the, the reins um, I'd probably put the straps lower down on this one if I was riding with it a bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but the guide strap keeps it quite, ne quite neatly there. But if, I, if I'm coming towards you, right, and I'm like this, you've got... Precious little to aim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It protects most it, of your leg as well. And it does protect some of the horse too. So mm -hmm. I find out, I think it's likely the kite shield developed at least partly as a, as a, because it sort of fills that gap quite nicely. As it a, looks as a, as right a, on a horse. Yeah, and it, and it sort of fills it, it and you, you do see them like this. This is sort of stay right behind. There's not much option mm. for, you to, for you to strike at. I mean, this is the horse. Although I think if I went for your face, yes. it would cause you to miss. Yeah. You would, you would bring the shield up, perhaps blink, and your, the, your lance point would move. Yeah. And I would mm. at least keep myself safe. Yeah, but I was just yeah. going for your face. Yeah, it, but it is interesting you know, the, the, how, how protective that funny shaped shield is. Oh, yeah, that works. And how much of your, you know, there's a, your foot on display there. There's mm -hmm. a little bit of that. And the side, it also is a bit, if it was slightly longer, it would protect um, a bit more of the horse even. And there are longer kite shields than that. And of course, if I went for your foot, deliberately, I'm exposing myself. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's always interesting, I think, seeing these devices used in ways which is fairly unusual, but it's probably very usual at the time. I just feel the kite shield is incredibly protective, mm. actually. And people have said, well, what about somebody fighting you on the other side? It's like, well, yeah, but you, you, you do that, don't you? You don't, <laughs> we're not in movies, you move your horse. And so. besides, <laughs> you're, you're not, a if it's a battle, if I move round to get on your open side, I get skewered by the guy to your right. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's a funny thing, you know, people have said, well, how do, you move the, how do you move the shield to the other side? It's like, well, yeah, it's probably a bit awkward. I mean, you sort of, you can do it, but why bother? Mm. And the horse is your legs. You move the horse. Yeah. Always. And you can see how much I can move him. And he's not particularly sort of fired up at the moment. So he's not no. on, on his tiptoes. But I can, I, I, you know, I can, I, can, I can move really quite quickly. Move in, mm -hmm. move out, turn around, attack again, go past. And you've got to be really concentrating on your I, toes. Yes, I've got quite a bit of hind quarters and fore yes. quarters to jab at as you go yes. past me. Yeah, you, yeah, you have, haven't you? But I wonder whether, if we've got similar sized weapons, whether you're going to stab the horse and I'm going to stab you, whether that's fair exchange. Everything is different, whether you're talking about a duel or a battle. Hmm. If it's a duel, the situation is completely different. But in a battle, you will have other guys to deal with and mm. there'll be one guy who will have the opportunity to get that stab in. Yeah. So you've got to get in, get out, rearm. 
Don't stop. Yeah. yeah. If I ever do get behind you, go forwards. Yeah, just get out of the way. Fast. Good. Right. Would you, do you want to get on the saddle? And, okay. Uh, it's a really good practice. So I was holding it. Sorry, the spear. You, you've got your... <laughs> Give me the spear. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Toe in. Uh -huh. Feet in. Training level. Could you feel reasonably, reasonably comfortable? Yeah. Right. It's good and beige in here. We painted it in your colours. Is there a medieval heraldic colour called beige? Could you have had beige heraldry? Yes. Damn it. <laughs> right. Very slow, it won't hit you. Okay. I'm going to go on jousting side. Right. Um, yeah, I'm and not going to. I'll just hold this, okay? Yeah. So you can see I'm. I'm actually higher up than you. You are, yes. And a warlord is probably. Uh, I'll come back and you'll, you'll sense the. The Im immense danger of being on the wrong, <laughs> having a horse on the wrong side of you. Yeah. Again, I'm not going to strike or anything, or even mm -hmm. level the spear, but just give you a give you a sense of of what it's like. This is just at a walk. If I was jousting, I would be slightly further out than that. Actually. Yeah. I'd probably be about this far aside from you. I'm going to lower the lance now, but I'm not going to hit you. Okay. Or even attempt to hit you, just so that you know. So that's the sort of view you would get. Mm -hmm. Do you want to lower your lance as well? Okay. At me, just to give you a sense of it. Obviously, we're doing this super slowly, but it's probably the sensible thing to do. Hmm. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Bonk. Okay. You weren't couching. I don't know whether you know that. Oh, um, true, I wasn't. Yeah. Are you using an earlier technique, my lord? Well, yeah, this is how I... I'm used to using spears as yes. a footman with it braced under on my forearm. elbow. Well, you, you, we and see that on the Bayer Tapestry, so it's perfectly legit, but I think mm. it gives you, well, they appear to have moved to couching. Yeah. So if we were dueling, yes. and each of us had an intact lance and wanted to be in the perfect spot to kill the other, yes. not to give him a fair chance, yep. you would want to be about on my, what would you reckon, about well, if seven, I was being chivalric, I, I, would, I, would be I would be on war side, I would do it from this side, so that you could see me coming. Right, so from the and, front, yeah. fine. Yeah. But if, but if I, here, if I I've got a chance to get you. I yes. think about half past seven is your ideal, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. If I wanted to get you, I would, I would be here. Yeah. And you almost can't even see me without turning around. So you've got a decent amount of distance to pass yep. by me. Yeah. And I've got the most awkward... Yes. Yeah, parry. incredibly, incredibly Angle. awkward parry. You yeah. know, I could just stand here and I could just, just stab you repeatedly in the back or the head. And uh, yeah, so you've got an incredibly vulnerable quarter there. Yeah. Incredibly vulnerable. I, I, don't, I don't like anybody riding in that quarter, even if they haven't got weapons. So if we were on a big flat field having a duel to the yes. death with lances, we would probably spend a while, each of us, trying to get into the half past seven position on the other. Yes, like, like a well, pair of dueling Spitfires. Exactly right. I mean, you might you might want to do the sort of frontal charge to begin with, and if you didn't yeah. hit, or if I could do that and parry, and then Whoop, yeah. come come around, mm -hmm. and obviously you'll be moving. But if yeah. I can get Brian behind you and just stab you, um, yeah, I would imagine there's an awful lot of that. But you can end up with a carousel, with both people just trying to get around behind the other people, and you just end up in a loop which actually becomes quite tedious when you're doing club tournament, when, you, when you're trying to hit somebody with a, with a melee weapon. Right. And they're turning, you're turning, and you're just going in a, in a literally in a carousel. You look like a fairground ride, and everybody's going, hit him! And it's like, <laughs> we're, all, we're both trying to hit each other, actually. Um, so then what you have to do is sort of change the direction and turn. 
yeah. but you sort of then you can become uh, more vulnerable because if we're let's say if I'm if I'm uh, let's say roughly here and we're, we're both turning the mm -hmm. only option I've got I can keep going and you can keep going we're just going right. around and around like turtles or yep. I can turn this way mm -hmm. catch me off guard I turn too late yeah and I you turn too late but uh, then I can get you but I've turned and revealed my weak quarter so you if have. you think oh he's turned away ah now now I've got him because he's literally just maneuvered himself mm. into the that bad position if I just do that again and show you yeah so if we're round and round in circles like the magic roundabout yep. I decide I'm bored with this I'm turning away and I see and I'm quick enough to turn into that I can yep. get into that position yes I've literally ridden myself into the worst possible place to be so the, I wonder whether medieval uh, tournaments sometimes dissolved into absurd round magic roundabouts of knights all going in a big circle or desperately trying to hit people and people started to boo because it must be very boring Right, but if you had two World War II fighter pilots in planes that had roughly the same turning circle, you know, they did somehow, through skill, end up one behind the other. It'd be, uh, be, be really interesting to work out, because can you turn, maybe you could turn inside. So if we were, if we were sort of dogfighting, yep. and if I then turned that way to, to break the circle, I've got to turn faster than you, haven't I? You've got to catch yeah. by surprise, yes. Yeah, so you, could, you might get a few moments of, yeah, if, they, if you'd lull them into a sense of boredom, going round and round, and, and suddenly go, oh, he's moved, oh, I forgot, missed it. I think that'd be quite funny. Well, I'm afraid I've lost my lance. I uh, skewered a couple of chaps to a tree over there. Thank you. Good, all right, let's see. So if you just literally just point it towards me, mm -hmm. uh, again, we're not going to do this fast. Um, and I'll, I'll come war side, but the, 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 the Fury technique is, but yeah, you just slide the sword <laughs> up the lance. Yep. And it's, uh, it's one of those, oh yeah, that makes sense. All you do is you take control of the lance at the far end of the lance with mm -hmm. the strong bit of your sword. Yep. And then they can't theoretically do much, you know, you've got it and then yep. you just slide the sword and... You've got better leverage than I have. And uh, yeah, and it just goes, it, it, it guides your blade into their chest or face. Yeah, if I were fully armoured, yeah. I'd feel fairly safe against that. Yes. But if I weren't, I'd be dead. Yeah. Yeah, and same on the, I think it's the same on the other side as well, but I've only seen it done on that, the, 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 the other side, the war side. And mm. That's why I mentioned that technique, which is you, you, you're trying to hit me and I can, I can do this. This way, yeah. And that pulls your, that really opens you up. Right. To, to whatever attack I want to do on that side. Because of the leverage, especially mm -hmm. if you've done it. There, there was a, I've seen this one done in an illustration. Uh, couching, couching a sword. Couching a sword. Yeah, which I, I have no idea how it would work. It's very short range, but I've definitely seen it mm. in an illustration. Using the quillens to, against your chest. And just now, stabbing somebody. Typically, I think if I were on a, uh, a late medieval horse, I wouldn't just have a big sword, big long sword, I would have some quite short thing that would be perhaps not suspended from my belt, but perhaps from the, the saddle in a you know, really quick to grab a short mace, a short axe or whatever. So that if you did get in with some technique like that, I can just drop the lance, ditch it and <coughs> grab whack. Would make sense, wouldn't it? Because if somebody's passed the, yeah, passed the lance tip, mm. you immediately want to just drop the lance because it's and you even see um, uh, types of armor where they have chains and they have two, even four different weapons hanging from the breastplate on chains. So you can't even so drop them if you want to. The, typically, there'll be different lengths. So, uh, hmm, I think I need a, a number three club back. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, what should we do now? Do you want to get on a real horse? Oh, go on then. I will get on the ground because I think it's better if I'm on the ground. I've got a bit more control over the horse we're going to put you on. Now, I don't mean to scare you, but he, uh, his, <laughs> his stable name is Beelzebub. Oh, I thought you said I was going to be on the Destroyer. Have you well, that's mind? his official name. His, oh, official na his official name is the Destroyer. Now, he's, uh, he's, he'll be very good. His, um, his, uh, his real name is Hawkeye, and he is one of the best jousting horses in the country. So he has won more tournaments than any knight, because knights ride him, 
right, and they win tournaments, so they think it's them, and it is in part, but it's also him, because he's steady and consistent, and mm -hmm. every run he does is exactly the same. He is awesome. He's semi-retired now, okay. um, but I'll get on him first, just to check that all his cogs are in the right place and his brain is engaged. All right. And then I'll get you on him and we'll give you, I'll give you a short riding lesson uh, and then we'll show you a little bit of the techniques on a living creature. Okay. Are you up for that? Absolutely. Great, good, good. I will, I'll give Warlord some hay now and uh, take me a little bit of time to get him organized. Mm. Hawkeye is a specialist jousting horse. Mm. So he has won many, many tournaments. He doesn't look like it at the moment. He's, uh, he's semi-retired now, but he's nice and steady for you. So uh, you should have a good time on him. But there's always a possibility. <laughs> because horses, are horses as, as humans are, they have moods and right. they can just take a dislike to you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we just move him away. Yes. And um, <laughs> you never quite know. And that's what's so wonderful about horses because they are another creature. And in any horse sport, you're obviously going to be dealing with them as, a, as another uh, piece of equipment, but they've got right. their own brain. Um, and the same with jousting, the same with war. So your horse might have a bad day. It'd be awful to go into battle and think your horse is having a bad day and you're having a bad day. So, mm. Yeah. Right. So first of all, we've got to, this is a more, more modern saddle. This is a Spanish, right. Spanish style saddle. So if you can come around this side mm -hmm. and just check, so put your tip of your fingers on there right and then put that as along your arm and that should give us a rough estimate of the length that the saddle that the, the, the stirrup needs to be so that's okay. about right for you so we've got that about right so it's about two inches short of my armpit something like that yeah possibly we might have to go a bit lower than that but let's just okay. try that right. uh, and then you got on the medieval saddle and yep. you face this way turn the stirrup towards you right and I will hold the reins, but I also want you to do, to put the reins, you can hold them like that, to be honest, just, okay. just shorten them a little bit, right. just so that we've got them. And then I will, Whoop. I will get on the other side. Yes. And then you sort of bounce your way up as best okay. you can. Good. Okay. Now, how do those feel? Good okay. Boy. Left one seems shorter than the right one, strangely. Should it be in the... Left one seems shorter. It's actually... Uh... No, may, um, maybe not. Now I've changed my foot position. I think it was just how I had it on my so feet. So what I'd like you to do is put the stirrups on the ball of your feet, okay. like that. And we're going to do some more modern riding for now, and then I'll, yep. then I'll move. Let's just move this. Okay, so now this. I can actually press down and lift myself up a bit. Exactly. Right. If you want them shortening, fine. So the position of your feet mm -hmm. for now, in modern terms, is to, is to be about, is to point your toes forwards and the heels down. Um, we've got flat medieval shoes on, so they're not ideal, but they'll, they'll do the job. Right. What, what, what I don't want you to do is sit, lean back. I want you to try and find the center of balance of the horse. So okay. ideally you want to be above the center of gravity. You don't want to be leaning back or leaning forward. You want to be nice and relaxed. I'm okay. just going to check your girth, by which I mean the Horses. thing that attaches to the saddle. The girth strap. Yeah. Yes. Can you put your leg forwards off the saddle for me? That's it. That, you, don't, you keep it, in, the, oh, right. keep it in, the, in there. And then I will, I will just tighten your girth up. I might have to do it to another one of those. Now put your leg back down. Now, I'm, my, my foot is, what, two and a half feet off the ground, if that? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. So, um, yeah. And yet, when you're on a living thing, the ground seems a lot further away. <laughs> uh, and you're stationary at the moment. Yes. <laughs> so we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I will check the girth as well. Um, mm -hmm. Now, holding the reins. So would you like to ride one-handed or two-handed or do you let's let's do let's do one-handed okay there are innumerable ways of holding the reins and different cultures have all sorts of different things mm -hmm. you could have for example the reins so if you put your hand on it you could hold them like that right that's perfectly legit in some cultures or i tend to do it that way around okay um you can also separate you can have it between this finger and so just hold it in a in a that's it. You can have it like separated mm -hmm. all sorts of different ways. You can also create what's called a bridge, 
so you can hold it with one hand like that. Oh, that feels quite good. Yeah, so we, we'll, we'll do that then, if, okay. you're, if you're comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Now, you shouldn't have too much tension on the horse's mouth. You okay. should have uh, what's called communication. So you need a bit of a feel, but not too much. All right. So it's a little bit. Now he's got, he's got a type of bit which is, has got some lever action. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very gentle with it. It has a very loose curb chain, so that won't actually have an effect until you pull quite hard, which hopefully you'll never have to do. Right. But um, you, he will feel, even if he's got loose reins, he will feel the movement. Oh, he's behaving like a camel, hey? What are you? Um, so commands to go forwards is you relax the reins mm -hmm. and you sit up and you squeeze, squeeze with your legs. Okay. Yeah. And you, what, by which I mean you literally just sort of push your legs in there. Oh, not at the thigh, but not at the down. thigh, not at the thigh. No. All right. Um, you squeeze with your lower leg. Okay. And if he doesn't move forwards, you do it a little harder. Right. What you don't want to be doing is pulling with the reins and squeezing because that actually is a signal to go backwards. Mi mixed, oh, oh I <laughs> see, it's different. Signals yeah. to go backwards. And as you get onto more advanced horses, you can squeeze on one side or the other, and you can squeeze on the girth or behind the girth right. to, to control different parts of the, of the horse. Ah, oh, so I could move his backside round. You right. could spin him backwards. So if you were on a war horse and you wanted to go backwards, you would use your leg um, on the opposite side to push him, but tend to move away from leg pressure. So right. the general principle is to move the thing away from leg pressure. Gotcha. So, um, if, this is an emergency measure, mm -hmm. um, if you need to stop, just, just tug on the reins. And feel right. free to hold on to the front of the saddle, <laughs> rather than holding on to the reins, if you need to. Um, okay. But I would suggest at this stage, we don't do anything other than a walk. So if you want to just walk in a circle around some of the targets, okay. and just get the feeling for riding a horse. Right, so remind, whoa, wait, hang on, whoa, hang on. That's it, pull I, gently. I did not. Pull gently. Good. I did not. A bit harder. Uh, Hands lower. Hands lower. I did Good. not Short attempt. Shorten range then. I Short. did not attempt to give him any orders there. He just took he off just, without he, me. Because I heard my me say walk. I, yes. Yes. Okay. So. Remind me one more time. Uh, the Good squeeze boy. with the lower leg. Squeeze with the lower leg. Back. I'm just going to back him up. Back, okay. back, 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 back. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Walk on. Yeah. The squeeze with the lower leg. The... What you relax the hand, relax. so you, you, uh, ah. you give with the hand to allow forward movement. Gotcha. You should have enough feel tension on the reins, not tension really, but you should have enough contact, it's called. Right. So that he knows you're in control. I'm with you. But not so that he knows to go forwards or backwards. It's just communication. So there's, there's, a, there's a form of communication called okay. contact. That's the hardest thing to do with a horse, is to know whoa, what you need whoa, to do. Whoa, whoa, and if you whoa. need to shorten the reins, just okay. just run them through your through your hands a bit. You know, use both hands oh, wrong way, wrong way. and just just shorten them and try and keep them even. That's it. Okay. So if you want to and if you want to move him this way, mm -hmm. you you pull the you pull the rein this way, and vice versa. Can so I do you, that with one hand? I you can. You can. You, it's called neck reining. So you just move the reins over to this side. That's it. This way. But that that pulls on this. That's called neck reining. It gives him a neck command as opposed to mouth command. Okay. Okay. So if you just go in a, I'll come with you. You just walk. Okay. Doing very well. And now I turn Good. him. And then you can turn. That's it. Whoop. Good. I want you to go forward. I want and you to go that way. <laughs> yep. The range is slightly uneven. Okay. Yes, they are. You're right. So if okay. you even them up. I uh, thought I had. Are they still uneven? Still uneven. Yeah. Uh, still uneven. The outside rein is slightly longer. That's it. So pull on the inside rein. Good on boy. This Good. one. Yep. Keep your hand. That's it. Good boy. Come on. Your hands down low. Good boy. Walk okay. on. Okay. Okay. You're turning to your left before I've told you to turn to your left. I wanted to go. <laughs> I wanted to go on the other side of that. <laughs> well, just try turning around now under your own steam. Try both using both hands. Okay. It's just just Oops. one hand. And in. again, I didn't. <laughs> That's it. You, I, uh, you're riding gaucho style. Um, Ooh, what does that, that mean? That's how you're holding the reins. You don't have to hold, you can have them coming through the bottom of your hands. Oh, like that. That's it, like that. That's yes. more, that's a, an English style. Okay. Good boy.
Good boy, you're doing very well. Did I deliberately stop him there? I'm not sure I did. Uh, he mm. knows it's a mounting block, so uh, if you if oh, you okay. if you walk him on again, let's walk okay, on so again. Walk, walk on. on. There we and, go. And I think voice, whoa, whoa. <laughs> voice control is important as well. Okay. So come round this way. This way. That's it. That's it. Tighten them now. Round, round, round. Mr. Camera. Missed okay. it. Well done. <laughs> and just try, just try going through this gap here. Okay. And that's it. And turn them again. Good. Good. Okay. Now you're getting it. Now go Welcome. round the quintain. Okay. Try going that way. Yeah. Good boy. Don't forget, you can, if you want him to walk, you can squeeze a little bit with him. I'm just... Last time I squeezed harder, he's, he felt as though he was going to speed up quite a lot. So yes, I, he, will, he will do that. That's how you would go into the next, I won't say the word, but that was how you would go into the next speed up. Okay. Which, um, you, would, you would give him a command Ooh. which is similar to the command for going from a halt into a walk. Right. That's it. Keep coming round. You can see why cavalry training took some time from being a complete beginner to actually yep. being competent. Oh, to I did actually... not mean to stop him there. No, he's attracted to me. He knows, oh, okay. he knows who I am right. and therefore I'm a source of comfort for him. So if he's getting confused signals from you, which he will be getting because you're a beginner. Yes. Um, he'll look to me. Well, for... He went the way that I intended that time. Brilliant. Yeah, you're getting there. You're getting there. We just keep, we just keep going. Don't go near the mounting blocks. Not going near the mounting block. <laughs> Okay, so now right. That's it. Good. And yeah, keep going right. Let's go round the other way. Good. That's it. Good, good. No, no, further right, further right. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Good, good. Now keep going forward. Come on. He's very kindly stopping right by the mounting block for you. Is what that, a good is that, boy. Is him hinting, get off? He's basically, he, he's giving you, he's making a horse comment on your riding skills and saying, well done, that's excellent, now get off. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, 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 a he's, on. he's having a lovely time. He's, he's absolutely fine, he's, but he's, he knows you're an inexperienced rider. Yeah. I could tell by what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So sit up, so shoulders back, that's right. it. Now ask him to go backwards. So that means squeezing, uh, you need a bit more, you need to take, Take up the slack in your reins. Okay, yep. Yeah. Right, sit up, yeah. squeeze, and ask him to go backwards. Squeeze. Uh, as. What's the word back? You, is no, it? you just, uh, by asking, I'm giving him the command. So both, both reins gently, and uh, that's it. Good, good boy. Good boy. And relax. Stop. And walk on. Good. Try. Walk so you can on. see how you can start to maneuver a horse around objects um, and around yeah. things. But what I'd like you to do now is, yeah, mm -hmm. turn, but ride past this target. Yep. So sort of about this far from it, as you know. And not stop next to the mountain. And not block. stop to it. Not stop. Just ride past it. Okay. Because a big part. He went past the mountain block. Excellent. <laughs> yes. A big part of um, riding a horse for combat is getting the horse in the right place, sure. so that you can hit. Um, I did not so knowing left. where you need to be, and okay, this is just him going towards he, you now. He, he's drifting. Try it again. Just go. Just go All around right. and just keep going. Good boy. Walk on. Come on. Oh no, sorry. I, that was me. I gave him a mixed signal. I pulled okay. with the rein. Stopped okay. him. Come on, My you. Fault. Walk on. Walk on. <laughs> what he, giving right. him the squeeze. Your legs are a little bit too far forward, so you need to be oh. squeezing about here. Oh, okay. That's for on. That's. Let's come try, on, you. Walk try on. again. Come on. Good boy. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> well, oh. You'll follow me. <laughs> good boy. Good okay, boy. I'm going to go. I'm going to tell him to go the other come way. Come on, you come this way. Oh, no, but, yeah, but sorry. you move then. He's always going to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> good boy. Come on, you. Come on, silly boy. Come on. Listen to your rider. Come on. Okay, this is a man sitting on a horse <laughs> that's following its owner. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the gate that you didn't mention um, yes. tends to be a bit more of an up and down movement. It very much is an up and down and movement. I got a feeling can, that maybe... Do you I'm, want to try it? Well, I got a feeling that maybe I would want... Whoop, good. I would want perhaps shorter stick, because I'd I, like to be able to stand up to protect myself, because I know how much a gentleman can hurt himself <laughs> during a trot when the horse stops unexpectedly. This and, has happened to me. And things get and underneath one that shouldn't be underneath Things did, one. and there were tears in my eyes. Cool. Right, so 
foot out of the stirrup mm -hmm. and uh, leg leg forward. Okay. That's it. And I will shorten. Just one yeah. notch to do it. Yeah. Okay. One notch is normally there's an inch between the holes, but because it's a doubled thing, it's about half an inch shorter. Oh, okay. So well, maybe that two may not. Try, just try it. Just put your foot back in. How does that feel? Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, How whoa, does that whoa, feel? Whoa. Hang on, I can't tell. Right. Okay. Um, I think another notch actually. Okay. Foot out. That's good. Well, what did you have in mind for, for next after this? Well, I thought we could do it stationary and you could try swinging a sword because you've now got a horse's head there. Okay. Uh, would you be interested? Because I think that might be better than trying to go to a trot. I think All right. one hand and a sword. Okay. So I will, if you just stay there. <laughs> Good boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do I do with my leg? What part do my legs play in stopping him? None at all? None. Well, yeah, there's, you slightly sit up and you, it's... It gets very subtle and I can't quite remember some of it because I just do it right. automatically. Okay. Um, let's use a target. Um, what about, uh, we'll use the SFK. Okay. Because it's got and a nice clanging whoop. noise attached to it. Okay. So uh, but I'll move the mounting block. Yes. Um, so you need to choose which side. You, you just ride past it, turn around and ride back and decide which side. First thing first, you have to decide which side you want to hit it from. Okay, now I've got to get the hang of very definitely riding and steering with one hand. Exactly. So you need even reins. Okay. Uh, even tension. Well, that's, so the clang is not going to alarm him too much, huh? He's very, very much used to it. Good point. Okay, so let's yeah. let's try uh, so this way forwards. There we go. Good and stitch that. Yeah. So first things that swing. If it had missed, would if have it hit had him. missed, it would have gone into your horse, and so would that one. Right. So. Okay. What? So, because what you're doing is typical footman's attack, which is yeah. that. Quite right. And 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 what you've got to do is you've got to do that or that. You've got to make okay. the arc Ooh. of the okay. the arc of the attack yeah. not intersect with your horse if you possibly okay. can. Okay. And I'm not close enough. <laughs> but, which is exactly one of the disciplines. You yeah. can't hit it if you're not close enough, and if the horse right. isn't near. Uh, yeah. Okay, go around that side of it then. Go on. That, uh, well, you're not really moving now, is it? But that's not. There you go. Whoa. Okay. He <laughs> wasn't expecting that. No. Is he stationary? Um, yeah. Just try. Just keep walking, and just okay. try. Just try that. Try that again. But try okay. to imagine. It's kind of yeah, I he's know, following sorry. you. Yeah, sorry. I think the fact that you move actually is part of it. If you stayed still, perhaps he would do yeah. that less. Try and imagine the arc of the weapon doesn't intersect with your horse gotcha. in any way, yeah, yeah. shape or form. Okay, so now... Yeah. And don't forget, you don't need to hit anything hard at this stage at all. No, no. It's just literally keeping an eye on the shape of the, the weapon and where it goes. Yeah. Good. Now, okay. one of the things I sometimes ask people to do is hum a tune while they're riding because they often forget they're riding then and they can concentrate on other things and if you if you can hum a tune and oh, oh look a mountain block <laughs> <laughs> good point if you can if you can sing a song right and use a weapon it's taking up a lot of your brain space and you actually you sometimes often relax when you're on the horse and ride better okay um yep that's what my boot smells like <laughs> good point do you want to try it a bit more uh, or, do you okay. want a different, or do you want a different weapon? Do you want me to give you a, uh, a lance? Uh, why not? Okay. Um, I'll tuck this in my belt. Yep. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh. <laughs> and he's following his master. <laughs> oh, there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, good boy. Good boy. Do you want me to take it from you or you just have it? Yeah, exactly. Is that all right there? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. Now you can start to see how to handle and carry a spear as well. You can see you talked about balancing it on parts of the saddle or yeah. on the horse. There's lots of different places you can balance it on oh, your toe. Um, okay, a bit late for that now, but uh, right. So, let's see. Oh, done. Good. Uh, oh, you're going that way, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well done. Gosh, you're hitting well. At this speed, I don't feel it's difficult, to be honest. <laughs>
Remember, try, try lowering, the, lowering the spear or lowering the lance into it rather than just riding the lance horizontally I'm with you. Yeah. Into, the, into the target. Okay. For all the reasons we said before. Keep going, keep going, there we go. Good boy. Oops, all right, so I lower it onto the target and biff. And I lower it onto the target, biff. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of timing involved, I think, to yeah. make your lance more effective. Oh, target biff. And try attacking on both sides. I think as you as you're just doing, aren't you? You're attacking on war side now. Oops. Yeah. Feel free to let the uh, lance slide through your hand and your armpit rather yeah. than taking you off the horse. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, and now on the other side. And you see what more of a, a acute angle you're hitting it at. I mean, there I was actually able to thrust by hand. It wasn't the, yeah. the horse carrying me to it so much as, sorry, that was a failure of one-handed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a wall, stop. Your reins, your reins are a completely uneven tension. Yeah, so. that was exactly, that was the problem. I could feel, at least I could feel what the issue Great. was. Yep. Now I feel the reins are too short. <sighs> this way, you know, your head, come on. That's it, good, that's way. good. He's going that <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's too short on the other side. <laughs> okay. It's, um, it can get away from you, actually, the, the, yeah, the, 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 you know, where they are. So yeah. you, um, you need to, yeah, it's too short on that side. So this side needs to tighten up. Right. Okay. It's strange, because I can't, it looked as though I had it even at the end there, but it can be, me, It can be down to tiny fractions of, of uh, energy and on a more even more advanced horse he's very advanced but he's not particularly high school right um but on a horse like come warlord or um he's not gonna go right <laughs> no he can you can a horse can go sideways actually i think he can go sideways but you won't know how to do that um again it's to do with your weight and your legs so okay. again you really want your leg oh around, it's too far uh, forward again yeah you really want your leg around here naturally both sides oh okay yeah as a sort of natural position right. and then you can i mean medieval style is often i mean we do see um uh, even horse even riders legs by the f um shoulder with horse when, when they have those spectacular lancing yeah they're literally positions. they're literally yeah. out here i um, mean they're sort of almost at 90 degrees their body's making 90 degree angle mm. just i suppose it's to do with the impact do you want to do a bit more uh right or do you want to so what else? We've got the hitting stuff for the lance. Well, what about, what about, uh, hmm. Things, if, if I'm trying to fight you and you're on foot, I think he's just going to just go towards he you. He will go towards me. You, you don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance of lining him up and him not coming towards me. Yeah. So he'll just do that. Um, oh, I think you've done a really good job actually, to be oh, honest. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Um, okay. So we could, you could try trotting. Would right. you like to try trotting? Okay, um, yes, I am a little, no well, up till now I haven't felt any fear really, but I do feel a little bit of apprehensive about trotting. Let's take the because weapons I know off you first. From experience, though I've never fallen off, that trotting can go wrong. Well, I think we need to introduce some fear. <laughs> okay. You want to give me the sword as All well? All right. Um, and uh, what I would do is again, just try and establish a sort of circle. Mm -hmm. Use both hand, one hand on each rein. Right. That'll give you more control. And when you've got yes. your, when you, your, your, your upper arm should be relaxed. And then if you imagine your arms by your side, and right. then you just tilt your forearm up to be in line with the rein. So there should be a straight line from here to here to here. Is that close? Pretty, yeah, yeah. It, it, it will vary all the time as he puts his head in a different place. And you, right. need, to, you need to respond to that and okay. maintain. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's it. And if you're finding your arms are going, your elbows are going behind your back, you need to shorten your reins. Okay, well, they're so not doing that yet. So like this means you can't really, your reins are too short. And mm. likewise, if you're like this and your arms are straight, your reins are too short, that right. means they're too long. And there's a, there's a balance. When a horse goes at different speeds, its, necks, its neck geometry changes. So when you go into a trot, he will shorten his neck and okay. you'll have to shorten your reins. So what you do to go into a trot is you what we call prepare for a trot. Mm -hmm. You shorten your reins 
How do I do that? Do I by literally spidering down them with your hands or putting them one in hand? Yeah, like that. That kind okay. of thing. Yeah. Right, yeah. You shorten them a little bit, just enough, and then you you sit up, uh, shoulders back, and you give him a bit more of a squeeze until he goes into a trot. And to come back down from the trot, yes, you just gently pull with the reins and sit, sit tight. All right, but you don't let the reins out. You don't, you don't reverse, let the reins out the way you went in. Correct. You don't let the reins out because he will shorten up when he starts trotting. The geometry of a horse changes depending on the speed. Okay. Um, you just do this naturally once you're experienced. You just don't even think you're doing it, but you just do it because you have to. Okay. And uh, stand in the stirrups? Right. There are, two, there are two ways to sit at a trot because a trot is two time. One, two, one, two. Whereas right. a walk is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice and smooth. A canter is one, two, three, one, two, three. With a trot, you can sit. It's called sitting trot. You sit one, two, one, two. Right. You're just relaxed and sitting on the spot, which is what I tend to do when I'm doing it. You have more contact with the horse. Okay. Or there's what's called rising trot or posting, where it's sit down, up, sit down, up, sit down, up. That's called a rising trot, which is a modern type. It's not very medieval at all. It's a modern yeah. type of riding. But it, it's, it's what you're taught, it's how you're taught to trot when you're starting out with horses. Yes, and, and you can get out of sync with the horse, so you're going down when it's coming up, and that's the main thing I'm worried about. If in doubt, do a sitting trot. Just, just, just I'll, sit I there I'll quietly. try that first, yeah. and if I can get it to work, then grand. If, uh, do it for a short period, and then stop. Just do literally trot for a couple of paces, three or four paces, and then stop. Just to build your confidence up about stopping and going. Okay. Okay. I don't want you to get into a trot and get faster and faster and faster and then start to panic and wonder how to stop. I want you to just trot for 10 yards and then go back down to a walk, walk for right. 10 yards and trot for 10 yards. And then it'll, you'll keep it nice and controlled. And as for commands to stop, there's no vocal command for stop, no? It's all no. in the reins? No. It's all in the reins and the seat. Yeah. You just, effectively, you just need to apply pressure and ask him to stop you just <laughs> do that okay if you don't want to do it don't do it but i think you should oh uh, right, yeah, uh, you're yeah, gonna come this far yeah good good well look just establish a nice circle okay a, a comfortable circle away from the cameras and, so and bigger, away from obstacles uh, just a circle somewhere it doesn't really matter where you can't really do it wrong all right i'll be here and i can yeah i can jump in if i have to okay Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. He wants to, he wants to look at the poo. Wants to smell the poo, okay. Uh, the, smelling the poo is horse social media. Okay. There's a whole Twitter feed down there. Fair enough, yeah, he's reading his... Yeah, just ask him to walk on, because he his... really shouldn't... Okay. Walk on. Walk on. Good boy. Good yeah, he's boy. reading his poo mail. So as you're going in this direction, just yep. shorten your reins and just ask him for a trot. Shorten your okay. reins and sit up, shoulders back. That's it. Shorten your reins and squeeze a couple of times. Oh, you do it like a pulse, do you? Yeah, it's a pulse, yeah. Try okay, it, it didn't happen. No, we'll try again. Fine. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Good boy. Right. So, uh, we'll try I it shorten the reins. Shorten the reins. Sit up. Sit up. And, and do a double pulse. Trot up. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. Up, up, up. up. Aha, something happened. Good boy. Come on. Up. Try it again. Push, push. Kick, kick. I don't know how forceful to be. I thought that was enough for him to feel, but... <laughs> try it again. Not. Just try it. Just make it a bit bigger. Yeah, okay. I'll avoid the poo this time. Yeah. He'll be a bit distracted by the poo. Oh, well, fair enough. Sorry. My just fault. Go, just go in a straight line and then okay. just, just, just kick him on a little. So. Just give him a bit more of a squeeze. Trot on. Trot on. Hop, hop. Whoops. Lost the stirrup there. Okay. Come on. Just stop right. for a second. Right. The issue. Whoop. The yeah, issue. Yeah. yeah. I should have said, you're shortening the reins, but you're also increasing the tension on them. So what you've got to do is shorten them, but not increase the tension because you're giving it a command to slow down. So I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. So what, what you're doing by shortening the reins is you're preparing for his geometry to change. Ah, okay. And then you squeeze so that you don't end up going, oh my God, I haven't got any reins. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're not increasing the tension. 
You're okay. shortening, you're moving your hands forward on the range. I am with you. Okay, so I spy the forwards. Yep. But I and let shoulders, it. you've got to put your shoulders back. Oh. So, and kick him on. Trot on. Trot on. Okay. Oh. Ooh. That's. <laughs> that must be. <laughs> that. Uh, did you. Did it catch you? Uh, no, but I feel that. <laughs> I feel that I'm teetering on the brink with regard to where, I, where my gentleman parts are. Um, Do, would you. <laughs> uh, um, oh, okay. Right. So. Well, that wasn't particularly successful. Do you no, want to it try, wasn't. Do you want to try again? Or I, I, think, I think we will get there. Mm -hmm. um, Give him a bit, bit, bit of a bigger, bigger I understand what you mean. The, lo the longer he's, I'm on him, the longer he's got to get the impression that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but on the, I think it's worth one more go. Okay, at cool. Least, at least one more go. Yeah. Do you right. want to go in a slightly different direction? Do you want to go in this direction? Okay. Yeah. Right, so I let you out. So what I need, what I need is your shoulders to be back as well. You need to sit right, up. Right, which is rather contrary to what you're asking me to do with my well, hands. Well, that's because your your elbows have got to be in the right place. Yeah. So by shortening, so if you just stop for a second, so okay, if, yeah. I, if I just explain to you, so by shortening the reins, so yeah. you'll be, you see, you your your <laughs> hands will be here. Yeah. By shortening the reins, you do that. Yeah. And then you kick on, and then you can bring your hands back. So it's a sort of your, your, you don't go, that's, that's too much, that's obviously, so you, you'll be riding like this normally, and yeah. then you shorten the reins, you just spider forwards a little bit, mm -hmm. but they're still not straight, and then as you kick, and you do it at the, roughly the same time, slightly before, Ooh, yeah. and as he goes into a trot, you'll keep, to keep the tension at the right level, you'll, your hands will naturally drift back towards your body. Okay, so do I get him trotting before I alter my hand position? You will, he will trot at the same time as you alter your hand position. More when complicated when, than when you I'm thought, an experienced it? rider, yeah. I'm sure you're right. Yeah. But just, just try it. Okay. Just, um, just, just, just give him a bit more encouragement. You know, okay. so feel, feel free to sort of give him a bit more of a tap. Come on. A bit, bit more, okay, right. Just be a bit so, more, a bit more whoop. bullish. That's it. Okay. That's it. Come this on. Way. Come on you. This way. Keep going. Come, Come on. on. There we go. Ah, that's good. Okay, that good. felt a bit better. Good, good. Right. Off, okay. off you go. Just try it. Let the reins kick him, that's in it. the Let reins go. double kick, kick. Give him a bit more of a kick. Kick bit him more off. Of a kick, kick, bit kick. more of a kick. Kick, 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 kick. He might do it on the way back. Yeah, Try okay. it on the way back. Okay. To the right. Let the reins out. Double kick. kick on. Yes. Um, oh shit. The reins gently. That's it. Well done. Yep. You. Uh... Oh. <laughs> I went. You kicked him into a canter. Well done, me. Yeah. <laughs> Let the reins out. Double kick. Kick on. Yes. And oh, pull shit. the reins gently. That's it. Well done. Yep. You. Uh... Let the reins out. Double kick. Kick on. Yes. And oh, pull shit. Pull the reins gently. That's it. Well done. Yep, you, uh... Ooh. <laughs> I went. You kicked him into a canter. Well done, me. Yeah. Well, sta <laughs> well stayed on. I lived. You know, well, stayed on. Let's get you back into the loop. And swore. I'm terribly sorry, YouTube. I didn't mean to complete that. We can leave that. <laughs> so, I'll explain what you did there. So, you gave him a, a good signal, but yes. it was, the signal it was so good that you moved him all the way through trot. Yes. Straight into canter. Yes. Which you can do. That's, that's Clearly. A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you held on very well. But you notice that your reins suddenly became very long indeed, mm -hmm. because when you go into a canter, they shorten up even more. Yeah. So the idea of teaching you to go into trot is to learn that they shorten. And then before you go into canter, I would have given you a whole lesson on how to go into canter, because it shortens even more. Um, right. With the horse, you, can, you can also widen your hands. You, which, there's, 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 there's all sorts of different things you can, and different go. cultures do handle horses very differently yeah. in, different, in different ways and different times. So there's no correct way, it's just what this horse knows right. uh, and what I teach him. But I wanted to give you a taster for it because Thank you. I, I think a lot of people don't realise how much work goes into making a foot soldier into a cavalryman. Mm. I mean, you know, some people learn as a kid and they don't really know what And how doing. subtle these changes are. Yes. Um, it's, a, a, I teach Lindy Hop all the time, and people are often amazed that two people can do all these really complicated moves without it being a, a, a choreographed routine. 
because they're connected and they're able to f follow all these very complicated. And a lot of the connection is very, very subtle and it, it can take years to get really good at it. Yes. And yes, this is not a simple command, a big movement that means one thing. It's a combination of repositioning and timing and the angles are pretty subtle. And the amount of force uh, reminds me a bit of that connection between uh, two dancers as well. It's basically the same thing, you're choreographing communication. I mm. imagine you, you have contact and signals you send through hand contact, do you, in the, in the dance? Or? Yes, it's largely whoop. It's largely to do with, um, I hold my partner and move my whole self, and if my frame, the way I'm holding my partner is right, she will, through my frame, feel what I'm up to. And similarly, you're talking about my yeah. altering my position in the saddle, so the horse can presumably feel yes. that and it, so it's yeah it's very similar yeah, it, it is it is a dance with another creature mm. uh, it is literally that and, yes and but, i can but i'm generally used to dancing with people who are a lot smaller than me <laughs> <laughs> yes and probably have a bit more brain as well oh yes yes all, almost all of them have much more brain <laughs> brilliant